I found this old dresser, and I have to say that I'm not upset at the person who painted this furniture purple, but I am curious to find out what's hiding under all that paint. My name is Barry, and welcome to Mad City Modern. I recently took a poll on my YouTube community page asking what your thoughts were on painting vintage and antique furniture. Almost 2,000 of you voted, and I'm looking forward to sharing those results with you in this video. There are several things I look for when considering a restoration project. I check the back side of the furniture to see if there's any additional information, including the manufacturer, the time period, and the wood species used to build the furniture. I also consider the build quality, and the dovetail drawers are just one of many signs that this dresser was well made. It's not uncommon in thrift stores to find furniture that's missing some of the original hardware but on more than one occasion, I've been able to find the missing hardware inside one of the drawers. This three drawer chest of drawers appears to have been made during the middle of the 20th century, but I don't believe it's specifically a mid-century modern style. The mid-century modern style often had very simplistic, minimalistic designs and organic shapes. American made furniture from the middle of the 20th century was commonly made from walnut or maple, but was not limited to these two species. In many cases, this furniture was manufactured by applying thin layers of walnut or maple veneer over a much cheaper substrate, like poplar or elm. In the last few years, I have painted several pieces of furniture, and some I was proud of, others I regretted, but I certainly don't see myself to be superior to those who paint furniture. I certainly understand the thrill that comes from taking a dated piece of furniture and painting it a new, trendy paint color. But if painting furniture is all you've done, then I would challenge you just once to try a complete restoration. You may find that there's just as much satisfaction in respecting the history of a piece, uncovering the beautiful natural wood grain, and restoring a piece back to its original condition. Just below the layer of paint is the original finish for this dresser, a thin layer of lacquer. I'll remove this by using the two and a half inch carbide scraper. You may find the thought of a restoration project to be intimidating, so let me encourage you by saying that I've never had a project turn out perfect. I often get asked when I use the carbide scraper and when I use paint stripper. Every project is different, for the dresser drawer, I can see the vertical striations in the wood grain. There are several areas where the veneer has chipped away on these drawer fronts, and for that reason, I'll use a paint stripper. This should help preserve as much of the veneer as possible. I like to use Clean Strip Premium Stripper. It's available just down the road from me, and it's also the best product that I've found here in the States. And yes, I am aware that there are more environmentally friendly products on the market. However, for most of my projects, I remove the old finishes with the 2.5 inch carbide scraper. You'll see that some of the paint started coming up while applying the paint stripper. I let the paint stripper sit for about 15 minutes as recommended, then scrape off all the excess with a plastic spatula. I'm using a plastic spatula this time because I'm scraping in the opposite direction of the wood grain on the drawer fronts. Using a metal scraper could leave large gouges in the thin layer of veneer. The first application of paint stripper only removed the thin layer of paint, so I'll repeat this process to remove the thin layer of original lacquer. It's probably no surprise that this work can be tedious at times, and it's at this point in the project when I typically move around between scraping, applying more paint stripper, and sanding. If you've watched my videos before, then you'll know that whenever there's a story behind one of these vintage or antique furniture pieces, I try and tell that story as accurately as possible. For this dresser, there is no story that I'm aware of. So I thought I would take the opportunity to explain why I create these videos the way that I do. There are some videos where I don't talk at all, and some people get upset because I don't explain all the steps. In other videos, I talk the entire time because I feel that there's a lot of information to share. And then of course, people say I talk too much. So I do my best to keep a balance, and if you ever come across one of my videos where I'm not talking at all, consider the fact that there are people all around the world watching these videos, 
And for some, they don't understand English and they don't want to hear my Wisconsin accent for a full 15 minutes. And I think sometimes the sounds of the shop are enough for you to understand what's happening. This is the part of the project that's so frustrating in many ways. It's so tempting to just fill the dings and scratches with wood filler and then paint the entire piece. I'll do my best to remove and replace the damaged sections of veneer with the wood chisels. Veneer repairs won't always be perfect and by cutting straight lines like this, the patchwork is much easier but is sometimes more visible. I'm relatively new to woodworking and furniture refinishing, so all I can do is my best, and I hope to continue learning by watching others. If you're still wondering, this is walnut veneer, and for those asking from my last project, the yellow painted dresser, that was Douglas fir. So if you've never tried veneer repair, I say just give it a shot. It may not turn out perfect, but you just cut it, glue it, tape it, clamp it, and sand it. I understand the thought process behind people numbering the drawers when they're starting a project. However, in many cases, you're assuming that the drawers have never been removed from that furniture piece in the last 60 or 70 years. At least when working with veneer, you may be better off relying on your common sense as to which way the pattern should go. I've decided to apply a natural finish to this dresser, and so I've sanded all the way up to 150 grit. Wood is a fiber, and by sanding to 150 grit, I keep the wood fibers open enough for the natural hard wax oil finish to bind to the wood fibers. I've used Rubio Monocoat many times and it's in the family of hard wax oil finishes. Other products in the same family would include Osmo and Odie's Oil. Both are great products, but if I had to compare all three of these hard wax oil products, Rubio Monocoat, in my opinion, is the easiest to apply and yields the best results. As instructed, I'm mixing three parts Rubio Pure with one part Accelerator. The Accelerator just speeds up the curing process of the oil from three to four weeks to seven to ten days. In my opinion, it doesn't get any easier or more satisfying than this. Just pour on and apply using the spatula provided or just a non-abrasive pad. Once you have applied this first coat, you'll want it to sit for about five or ten minutes then come back and wipe off all the excess with a shop rag. And in some cases, the name monocoat would indicate that one coat is just enough, but for furniture pieces that receive high traffic, I typically do at least a second coat one or two weeks after the first application. I believe the drawer pulls are original to this furniture piece and for that reason I'll use them. They're not my favorite but I'll just clean them up. Some will still have normal wear and tear and if the next owner decides to replace them that would be okay. The 
Feel free to follow my other socials, and for $5 a month, you can join Patreon for additional content. Otherwise, as always, if you feel that I've earned your subscription to the channel, feel free to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for all your support, and I'll see you soon.